In this video, we're going to look at Cruiscore's algorithm. Like Prim's algorithm, Cruiscore's is used to find a minimum spanning tree of a network. Cruiscore's builds a tree by adding arcs or edges, whereas Prim's, as we saw in the last video, considers the nodes or vertices. So if you're asking a question, the main difference between the two, Cruiscore's considers the arcs or edges, whilst Prim's considers the nodes or vertices. We're going to start the video with some basic revision. We're first going to look at the definition of a tree. A tree is a connected graph with no cycles. So this is an example of a tree. This is node or vertex A, node or vertex B, and you can see that we go up to node G. The line connecting them is an arc or an edge. We can see that this is a tree as it has no cycles. A cycle might be B, C, D, B. Also, each vertex is connected. If we had node or vertex H out here and it wasn't connected, this wouldn't be a tree. This one is not a tree as we've got a cycle. C, E, G, F, C is a cycle, therefore this isn't a tree. A spanning tree is a subgraph which includes all of the vertices of the original graph. So let's call this graph G. What we could do here is draw a spanning tree. So a spanning tree is going to include all of the vertices or nodes in G. If we have N nodes, then we're going to have n minus 1 edges in our spanning tree. These spanning trees aren't unique. As you can see, we could draw another one. Let's do a different configuration. I might do something that looks like so. So let's go there. Let's go up to here. Now, at this stage, I can't connect H with A, as that would create a cycle. So what I'm going to do is go down to F. I'm going to come up to G. And then finally, I'm going to connect down to E. So we can see from here now that these are not necessarily unique. A minimum spanning tree isn't necessarily unique. A minimum spanning tree is a spanning tree of least weight. So for example, if this was 10, let's say this is 12, this is going to be 6, this would be 7, we might say that this is 8, we might say that's 9, and that's uh, 11. These might be now the distances between towns. So town A to town B might be 10 kilometers. A minimum spanning tree is a tree now, the spanning tree of lowest weight. So we're looking to minimize now these values right here. What we're now going to do is look at applying Kruskal's algorithm to find a minimum spanning tree of a network. So in the question, it says use Kruskal's algorithm to find minimum spanning trees for each of these networks. So I've just chosen one. We're asked to state the weight of each tree. We must list the arcs in the order in which we've considered them. So here now is my network. When we're dealing with larger networks, prims is generally more advantageous. We can put prims in matrix form, which means that we can deal with much bigger uh, networks. Also, with cruise schools, there is a possibility of creating a cycle. So despite this being small, when I now find my minimum spanning tree, I'm actually going to draw it out such that I don't create those cycles. So if you ask which is best for larger networks, generally prims is the answer. Let's now look at applying Kruskal's algorithm. The first step is to consider each of these arcs and put them in ascending order of weight. So let's start off. The slowest weight on here is going to be 11. So what I'm going to do now is consider all of these arcs. The first arc that I'm going to consider is EF. EF has a weight of 11 units. That might be kilometers, it might be time, it might be hours, it might be what well, might be time which is hours, it might be the cost in pounds. Now, I look and look at my next arc, the next lowest weight, I've got a 12 and a 12. Kruskal's algorithm says that I can put these in any order. So what I'm going to do now is 2 and that's going to be B D. And that has a weight of 12. The third one is going to be CD, and that also has a weight of 12. Next one, what have we got? 14? That looks to be 14. So if you want to do this yourself, you're welcome to do so. If you want to fast forward, as this is going to be slightly uh, time consuming, you're welcome to do so. So AH is going to be equal to 14 units. The next one we're going to have now is 15 units. And the reason I'm doing this is to ensure that I don't miss any out. A common error is to leave them out by just looking at them. So a small marking pencil or slight circling is going to be beneficial initially. 
such that you don't miss any. So we've got 15. If I now look, what else have I got? I've got a 16, so we're going to now consider AC. AC is 16. So AC, the six consideration, AC is going to be 16 units. Then we've got a 17, so let's look at our 17. 17 is BC or CB, so let's put that on. So we've got B to C, which is going to be 17 units. And then we've got two 18s. I've got BE and I've got GH. So either order. So the eighth one is going to be B to E, which is going to be 18. The ninth one is going to be GH, which is also going to be 18. As you can see, these are in ascending order of weight. Ascending means lowest first. Okay, let's now look for the next one. What have we got? We've got now 20, 21, 24, and 25. So we've got C to H, which is 20. So the tenth one now, C to H, we're going to have 20. Uh, 21 is the next one. So this is gradually uh, unfolding to give us exactly what we want, the eleventh one which is going to be C to G. Let's make that slightly clearer. C to G is going to be 21 units. And then I'll do the final two. As stated, you will do this quicker as you uh, start doing a few of these. I'm just doing it step by step initially. So 12th, and then we'll have 13th. So F to G is going to be 24. And then we're going to have F, uh, it's like A to B, isn't it? A to B, which is 25. So that's the first step of True School's algorithm. What we now do is go down at our list and add these arcs to the network. We continue to add them until they create a cycle. If the arc creates a cycle, we reject it. So that's step two. Also, if we have two of the same weight, we consider them in turn. So I'll consider BD, then I'll consider CD. So let's start off. Let's just clear this now. So all we're going to do is complete now this uh, minimum spanning tree. And once the list is completed, all of the vertices will be connected. So let's do the first one. And I'm going to do this as I go. So I'm going to have EF. Quite clearly, we can add EF. The way I like to see this now is with crew schools, it's almost like building flat pack furniture. So if we were building, for example, a bed, we wouldn't necessarily have to connect everything at first. I could make all of the slats, then I could make the frame. And that's the difference. Prims, we would have to keep connected. So for example, if I was connecting water up from a water fountain, I'd need to ensure that it was always connected. So if you want to view it that way, rightly or wrongly, it's one possibility for you. So one advantage of cruise schools is that we don't have to keep this connected. We're simply adding the arcs of lowest weight in turn. So what we've got then is E to F. So E to F is going to be now 11 units, and that is fine to add. So what I'm going to do is write now that tick is equal to add to network. Cross is going to be reject. So you need to show the examiner, if you're doing an exam question, exactly what you mean by ticking. Often we would write them EF, BD, and when we come to one that we reject, then we'd write reject next to it. So, what I'm now going to do is consider BD. BD is the next one. Quite clearly, we're not yet able to create a cycle, so I'm going to add that. And BD has a weight of 12. So, we got a weight of 12. Now, remember, at the end of a question, you're asked to state the weight of each tree. In this case, the weight of one tree. So, all we're going to do is add all of these up at the end. It's something that people often forget to do, me included, but just be aware that as soon as we've connected it up, we need to now find the lowest weight. CD, let's do CD. So CD we've got now, and we can, of course, connect that. That's not going to create a cycle. So if it does create a cycle, we'll just go ahead and reject it. But as of yet, we've not yet done one. So there's CD. So CD is good to go, and we can put that on. And CD has a weight also of 12. So yes, we will have that one. AH, AH, nice, that's over there. It's not interfering in any way, certainly not going to create a cycle. So we'll go ahead and we'll say AH is good to go, and we will add that now to our minimum spanning tree, or another word, or words, minimum connector. So if you hear minimum connector, it's minimum spanning tree. So we've got A, we've got H, and we've got now 14 units. So 14 hours, 14 miles, 14 pounds per cable, something along those lines. Now let's consider DF. 
If I put DF on, I'm going to now have this line here. That's not creating a cycle. It's merely just connecting the two. So yes, let's do that one and put that on. So D to F. D to F is fine. So let's do that. 15 units. So yes, I'm going to have that. So that will go like so. So DF is good. AC. AC is 16. Yes, we can have that. So all I'm doing is connecting these up. And that is perfectly fine to add. So A to C is 16. So 16 is fine. B to C is not. That is going to create a cycle. Therefore, I'm rejecting B to C. At this stage, I've got BE, which is 18, and GH, which is 18. These are the same weight. We consider them in this order or in turn. Now, B to E is going to create a cycle. So I'm going to reject that. G to H is not going to create a cycle. Therefore, I'm going to add this now to my minimum spanning tree. So let's go across and we will put G to H. G to H has a weight of 18. And we can do that. G to H, 18. So let's say that is good. Now, H to C or CH, which is 20, is going to create a cycle. Therefore, I reject it. As you can see, the later on in the list we go, quite clearly, the more cycles are possible. So the next one, C to G, no, that will create a cycle. If we consider F to G, no, that's going to create a cycle. And then finally, A to B, no. In the la or on the last part of this video, I said that if we have N vertices, then we're going to have N minus 1 edges in our minimum spanning tree. So here we can see that we've got eight vertices and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Therefore, this is now correct. We've got, or at least it's got the correct amount in. So what we need to do now is state our minimum spanning tree, the weight of it. So what have I got here? 24, 35, then I've got 49, I've got 64, I've got 80, I've got 98. So we can say that the minimum weight is going to be 98 units, whatever that is, and that will be now our minimum weight of our spanning tree. So there we go, that's applying cruise schools. All we're doing now, the first step, is to list the arcs in ascending order of weight. We then start to add them. If they don't create a cycle, we add it. If they do create a cycle, we reject it. If we have two values of the same weight, we consider them in turn. So one advantage of cruise schools over prims is it doesn't have to be connected all the time. One disadvantage is that for larger networks, it's often harder to see cycles. We can't put this in matrix form and it becomes quite tricky. In later videos, we will look at more comparisons between the two. But hopefully for now, you've seen how to apply cruise schools algorithm to find a minimum spanning tree of a network.